Good evening. Welcome to the uh, Okoe Planning and Zoning meeting of March 8th, I think it is, 2016. Call the meeting to order. We have, a, I think we have a quorum here, but um, let's begin with the invocation and pledge of allegiance. Um, please stand for the pledge and a moment of silence for all the men and women in uniform around the world. Amen. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I thank you. Please be seated. A couple announcements. Um, I'd like to have you turn your, if you've got phones on, please turn them down, or at least uh, to vibrate. Um, we also want to note that the um, Okoe is having a downtown by Lakeshore kickoff meeting on March 14th, 6.30 to 8 p.m. at the Lakeshore Center. Uh, it's open to the public, free. Um, tell your neighbors and other friends about it. Come find out what's going to be happening down there. And of course, on March 15th, 2016, is the election. Uh, the mayor and District 3 commissioner are up for uh, offices. And uh, there's also the presidential primary that's included in that. So be sure to show up for that, March 15th. And um, there's also maps back there if you don't know where your voting precinct is. I'm gonna tell you where to, where to do that. All right, moving on, roll call and quorum. Chairman McKee? Here. Vice Chairman Marcotte? Here. Member West? Here. Member Sills? Here. Member Dillard? Here. Member Briggs is absent tonight. Member Keithler? Here. Chairman, we have a quorum. We have a quorum, thank you. All right, moving on to the next one. We'll move to consent agenda. If there's any items that you feel that you'd like to pull off that, just let us know. Hearing none, we'll move on. I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. I got a motion, I got a second. Any discussion? Questions? All right, hearing none, we'll just uh, call for the question. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, it's unanimous. Next item is the, um, we have no old business, so we'll move on from there. New business is Oak Trail Reserve. Um, let me bring to your attention, there's a couple of revisions. Um, in your packet on the desk. The uh, plan was changed somewhat, and I think there were some changes in the uh, in the description. of the applicant if they're here. Mr. Fabre, anything you want to tell right. us about this? Mm -hmm. Just for the record, uh, my name is Antonio Fabre. I was a reviewing planner for Oak Trail Reserve. Um, staff is ready to do a presentation for Oak Trail Reserve. It's a preliminary slash final subdivision plan. Um, it's located north of Clacona, Okoy, and it's part of the extension of Clark Road that is um, hasn't happened yet, but uh, we have the right of way, and we also have this triangle piece that the subsequent applicant developer um, deeded to the city. Uh, this project has been around for um, a long time, um, dating back uh, 10 plus years. Um, it went to different iterations. Some, one time it was a townhome product with some single family, one time it was all single family. But um, right now, uh, we have all single families as being presented uh, for you. Uh, the future land use is low density, 
uh, residential, which allows up to four dwelling units per acre. Um, they never um, exceeded that threshold. Um, in the center, there's some conservation area, which is uh, more or less was a, uh, a cattle pond that was dug up a long time ago, and then it started, wetland species started growing in it. Um, they are handling this, that, uh, that hurdle through uh, St. John's, uh, so they can get that permit as well. The uh, PUD um, is a, is a low-density low PUD, which matches uh, the uh, future land use. Uh, here's an area of the site, and again, this is, this is Hobson Road. The project is to the east of that and south of Trout Lake Road. Um, again, these two parcels right here, uh, this one's dedicated to the city for the right-of-way extension, and this triangle piece is dedicated to the city. Most likely, it's going to be a trailhead um, for the future, uh, for, the, uh, for the existing uh, Orange County Trail. This is, the, this is in your packet, and this is how the layout is supposed to be. It's, it's for 123 units. Um, it was, uh, the, the lots were 52 and a half and 42 and a half. When the applicant was going through this process, uh, he was following the bouncing ball with the, uh, uh, with the Florida Building Code. And certain items in the Florida Building Code came into effect. When, some, when codes come into effect, there's a little learning curve where um, how they interpret uh, the, the, the building code. So they thought they had to build it a little bit more wider to, for, for the fire codes. Um, since then, um, before um, this, before I wrote the staff report, because I mentioned it, <laughs> they came back, the applicant came back and they figured out a way uh, with uh, with uh, with a building official to somehow go back to 50 feet wide and 40 feet wide, which was the original plan to begin with. So um, this is what you have in your in your dais in front of you that the sheet that was made uh, came up. Um, now before they have real loaded over here and real loaded over here in these two sides. Now he's going to propose to do 50 wides along here, all of these are going to be 50s. And then the only ones that are going to be 40 foot wide, which are rear loaded, the uh, uh, access to the house, you park through the rear side. The front of the house is fronting the, um, the trail system. It's going to have uh, brick columns and decorative fencing all along this portion of the site. Um, we don't want to, we want to work with the applicant, we want to facilitate the project. Uh, we, we believe the project is a good project. Um, he, he squeezed in there three more lots as to 126 if he does this scenario. Um, like I uh, like alluded to in the, in the staff report, I'm looking for us to approve it and we're just going to uh, staff finish with, with, um, with the comment reviews as part of our um, comments that we have at the very end so he can uh, go forward to hopefully be in April in front of the city commissioners with everything all done. Um, this is an aerial photo that's in your packet and it shows um, a lot of the trees are going to be uh, trying to maintain. It's going to be a conservation area. This is going to be the water retention area. This, to the north, the only thing is this is orientated with the north over here. This is Clark Kona Okoik. This is the extension of Clark Road in this direction over here. Um, to the north is going to be a, uh, a vinyl fence with landscaping. Um, to the, uh, all along this way will be uh, a wall and landscaping. Over here will be brick column and a decorative metal fence. And then it's, this is probably a black chain link fence. It's because this is going to be all existing. It's, we're not, we don't want to, um, uh, you know, they want to have some type of security to the site and some, type, some way of maintaining it. Again, this is just the uh, oval. The Tony, can I interrupt you? You were talking about the fence alongside um, Clark Corner Ocoee Road. He says black chain, uh, chain link, black fence probably. Is that it, going to continue north or I guess it's west on that where the drawing is? It would only be Up. against the conservation area. So okay, what about this uh, boundary, vertical boundary in this, this drawing? This will be columns and decorative metal fence all along here. Okay. It will be like this. Okay. 
graphic. But what is the, um, the I guess, end. Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually the north north boundary, really. North will yeah, be a that, vinyl, right. decorative vinyl fence okay. with landscaping. I did see a detail, that's why I was wondering if that's what it was. That's, this is where it's gonna be at, right here. And along the uh, <coughs> east or west boundary, same thing? This will be a, a wall. Well, so that will be a wall along there? Yeah, okay. it'll be a wall. Just like similar to the product he did with the uh, McCormick Reserve. And if and when Clark Road is extended, will it follow that same path along that wall? And yes. And then, then divert north? Yes. North? He's going to have to write, build this wall all the way through here, all of this okay. along this border. And, and Clark Road is scheduled to follow that at some point? Um, Clark Road, we already have the plans from the uh, subsequent um, uh, developer. We're going to revisit those plans for him to build um, the improvements he's obligated mm -hmm. to build, which is going to be two lanes uh, for coming into the site. Um, right. Part of the other two lanes, the Arden Park developer is obligated to do as well. So okay. we're trying to um, see if we can have both of those, all, all four lanes built at one yeah. time. And that's what we're striving, striving for right now. But will it follow the boundary of this development? It'll, it'll follow. The the, the extension will follow along this triangle piece mm -hmm. and it'll go into Hudson Road and this will go straight okay. out here and I believe it jogs in this way. That's where it turns, yeah, it turns yes. west I think. It'll go north. Okay, thanks. That's pretty much the uh, conclusion of the uh, presentation. Uh, the applicant is here, here. If, if you have any questions that I can handle or that he can handle, um, he'll be willing to answer any questions. Um, and the DRC met March 1st. Uh, we approved uh, approval. Then uh, we're also facilitating this request and we're asking for it to be uh, approved subject to st uh, uh, sort of the resolution of staff comments and this will be part of the resolution of the staff comments. Okay, well, I guess one thing I want to clarify is what is the, uh, the, the um, easement on the sides? Is it six and a half feet? Is that what I was reading? That uh, the setbacks. That's what he was. The setbacks on the yeah, side. He was going six and a half feet. Well, he needed I like thought an it extra was seven. Foot. I thought seven was our standard. Uh, well, this is a PUD, and that's why so he it's got allowed the, to change that. Then. Yeah, okay. we have to amend the PUD um, to so allow for this. He's going to go as much as five feet, I believe. Um, this is similar to his product that he's done for Spring Lake Reserve that's currently being built. So they can go down to five feet. Five feet, I believe, is what he's proposing now with the new changes. Okay. All right, that's my question. Uh, the, um, Can I ask a question? Uh, of, uh, Antonio, how close are we getting to uh, McCormick Road? Uh, is this getting us with Clark Road with the extension? Eventually, we're going to go all the way to uh, Clark Road, I mean, to uh, McCormick, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it's hard to, you know, it's hard to see the future. My crystal ball gets really foggy <laughs> sometimes. Okay. Um, but hopefully this is one step that we have to do. And, and uh, for sure, he's going to have to build, no matter what, he's, gonna, he's obligated to get a, a two-lane system all the way up here, which is part of the process to get the rest. Arden Park, I believe, they're, they have to, they're obligated for their system and, like, phase, Phase four, over, yeah. I believe, and they're so they're coming up to it because they're, they're working on phase two, phase three, I believe phase four is the one that they're obligated to uh, to build, and and we're trying to have discussions with them to do it, maybe do it sooner, and with, especially uh, this part right here, since he's got to go in there and build, it's a lot cheaper to build all at the same time yeah. and try to build one part and then come back and build the other. Uh, mm -hmm. So hopefully um, that, that developer will, will see the logic in that. Does the Arden Park still have an entrance on that, that Clark Road extension they, in, their, in their plan? They do. They yeah. do. That's like phase five. Yeah, that's what phase I thought. Five, so. But that would sure okay. alleviate uh, some of the traffic coming south on Clark Road if they yeah. can go out to McCormick and uh, go out mm -hmm. to the, then that 429. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah, and he's doing the uh, the other part, the north part. He's doing the uh, the little extension of that road as well. Okay. So it's coming together. Good. That's uh, right. that's beautiful. I'm, I I love it. At this point, I'd like to invite the applicant to the, if you'd like to speak to us and add something, if you have anything to add. Yeah, yes. And 
If the, any of the board members have questions after he speaks? Well, for the record, my name and address, please. And yes, for the record, my name is Richard Wolfhart. I live at 1642 Bridgewater Drive in Lake Mary, Florida. Uh, I am the developer and the engineer on this project. Uh, I'd like to thank the staff for all the help getting us to this point, and we look forward to starting the project. We're hopeful that, uh, subject to being on the April 5th board meeting, that uh, we will break ground sometime in April. Oh, good. And uh, this would let us have product out there in time for the, uh, the fall. Um, so we, we are excited about it. Uh, Mr. Seals, as far as the road, uh, we, we will continue working with Cal Atlantic to the west. We see a benefit, obviously, to seeing the road going through not only for this project, but for our McCormick project. So oh, okay. uh, we are going to work with them to see if we get them to dedicate the right of way. Yeah. As an engineer, I've agreed to do the design uh, pro bono just to get it done. So when an engineer does that, you know, we're, we're excited about trying to make it happen. So we'll do everything <laughs> we can to make it happen. And if you all have any other questions or any uh, comments you want to address, I can do that. Anyone have questions of the of Mr. Wolfhard? Yeah. Uh, I do. Sure. Yes, go ahead, sir. So if I understand this correctly, on E Street, the people on the west side of the street are going to be looking out their front door at the back of the houses across the street? That's correct, but the elevation of our backs are, are actually much more advanced. Uh, in fact, uh, they, they have mother law suites on them and everything else. So it, uh, the salespeople uh, that we did, MI Homes is one of the builders we're working with here. They are very comfortable with, the pro with their product doing that. What do you think the market is for houses that are five feet apart? Uh, well, I can tell you that in McCormick, which is the same project or product types, 50 foot lots with five foot setbacks, uh, we have uh, not even opened officially. We've sold three houses and we have five reservations. So we think it was a very good market. We think it's a very strong market here on this project because of the fact that the fronts are facing the trail, we believe we're going to have a, a be able to get a lot of people who want to be able to just walk out of their house. We'll have two electronic gates. They can walk right onto the trail and come right back in. So everyone in this community will be able to have uh, very easy yeah. access on and off the trail. We think that's going to be a big selling point. For clarification, what is the minimum distance between homes? Uh, ten feet, five and five. Five and five. Okay, oh, that's what I thought. Um, for you, uh, Tony, um, seventy percent uh, impervious area. Does that apply individually to each lot? Each lot. You going to be able to meet that, Mr. Wolfhart, on those forty-foot houses on those uh, on the facing the trail? They look pretty tight on there. Yes, sir. But we do we do meet that. We have thirty percent open space on those lots. The, the one important part um, where you start eating up a lot of space is where someone wants to come in and put a pool patio or something of that nature. If you notice, uh, which is not a requirement, but we felt because of the type of product we're using that it, we needed to put a cabana pool uh, package in here, which we have. So it will be a very extensive package uh, used and negate the need of people having their own private pools, which also uh, keeps down the, the impervious areas. Okay. so. You figure people are or are not going to have their own pools? They, the, the options are there, but they would have to meet the 70% the rule. So they can only build up to where that they have it. And it would not be a very, it would be a lap pool at, at very best. Uh, we don't anticipate, uh, it will, it, we don't anticipate having many pools uh, outside the, the community pool that we'll be, we'll be building. Thank Anybody you. else? Any other questions? The, uh, the nope. corner that uh, Clark Road cuts off there. Now, you can't see this, but you know where the road Clark Road's going to go? Yes. There's a small little triangle there, property yeah. there. Yes. What, what will that be used for? Probably be, uh, be a trailhead. Uh, in fact, we have a plan. Uh, one of the things we suggested, it's not a commitment. Tony, can you point to that area, yeah. please? It's, uh, one of the things we suggested Thank is you. a very nice treat area. The seller of the property, the person I'm buying it from, dedicated that to the city back seven, eight years ago. Uh, in our preliminary designs and in, in the final design, we, we noticed was Hobson Road initially was being looked upon just to be taken out. We have come back with a suggestion, and it's only a suggestion, that to leave Hobson Road there and put parking on both sides, and it becomes an immediate place so we can leave all the trees just where they are, have a really nice trailhead, and part of our design takes that into account. So we, we think it'll be a real nice addition. I would, that will be a good addition. As a proponent of the trails, I agree with you entirely. Yeah. Anyone else? Jim? Jim, did you have a comment? Or? Oh, I'm sorry. 
Anyone else? Questions? I guess I'd, um, I've been a outspoken um, dissenter on the 50-foot lots because of a parking situation that's created when you have families with four cars and this size lots. Uh, but I do want to commend you on this because you did make an effort to provide uh, quite a, was it three or four areas of overflow parking. I'm not sure how many spaces, but uh, I want to thank you for including that. That will, that will keep the friction down, I'm sure, in the neighborhood. <laughs> well, we, again, being the fact this is the third or fourth project we've done in Ocoee recently, we've he heard the board, and as part of our design, we will continue trying to add that, that, uh, that feature in. Again, I appreciate it. Thank you. Very good. I have one more question. It'll be Hello. run by an HOA. Excuse me? It'll be run by an HOA. Yes, it will be. It'll be HOA. Now, I'm not, I'm not sure that Antonio said this, but it is a gated community also. Mm -hmm. So it'd be, it'll be private streets, and, and all that will be owned and operated by the HOA. Okay. okay. Have we seen the... Uh, Declaration yet for the, for the we, HOA? We don't see those until platting. Okay. The, uh, the attorneys look at those. I'd be very happy. Our HOA documents, we are within a day or two of having our St. John's permit. And so, as part of that, we had to do the HOA documents. I would be very happy to submit those to the city uh, this week and uh, have them on file. So, and uh, the plat, we will also probably be coming back uh, to this board or to the, the commission, I would say, in about two to three months. We're gonna we're gonna try to plat this once we have the groundbreaking and have the most of the dirt work done. But before we even start the utilities, we'll start the plat review. We, 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 wanna, we found with McCormick, we waited a little bit too long. We waited towards about three quarters of the way through construction, and it, it caused problems both here at the city and with us. So we're gonna start that process a little bit earlier this time, and hopefully it'll be a little smoother for everybody. Very good. Thank you. I, I'd like to see a copy of that just as a courtesy, if you don't mind. Um, Tony, I know the revised uh, drawing you gave us actually does show the conceptual Clark Road with that looks like the entrance to the Arden Park. Yes. There. So in case anybody else didn't catch that like I didn't, <laughs> it's on that drawing. Jim, did you see that from there? The, what's the little Clark Road conception? Thing? What's Thanks the so price point on these properties, do you think? Low low end will be in the 250 to 260 range, oh, and probably wow. ties 350 on the other wow. ends. So it's again, we're just in the final pricing, but those are the numbers I've heard so far. They're all two stories. Uh, though there's a one-story model, but uh, it, it'd be very honest with you, most the buyers uh, we see are coming out and want the square footage, and they're getting the two-story the two-story units. Are these generally three bedroom? Uh, three um, bedrooms, the most common. I think there is again the one story. I think is a two bedroom, two, two bath. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's, we, we see this as a very active community, given the fact we're yeah. next to the trail. Uh, we see a lot of families. So we, we would envision three, four, or five bedrooms being the, more, the norm. Is there a playground area? Uh, there's a playground area yeah, around, uh, around the, uh, uh, the pool area. And we're now looking at back, if you, as Antonio pointed out, that whole back end is going to be left just the way you see it with the trees. And we are, are looking at the potential of, of providing some additional uh, amenities back there so oh, okay. more than likely we will have it I do not have a quote-unquote tot lot or a playground in that plan at this point uh, but we are looking at, at potentially adding that as, a, as an additional amenity once we get to the next step on this project is the MI homes the only builder yes they'll be the, they are the sole builder on this property Interesting. any other questions any, uh, right now, open up for public comment. Anyone would like to speak? Please fill it out for them. Bring it up. Seeing no one, we'll move that and close that part of it. All right, so I guess I need to have a motion. This is an action item, so. Can you give me a motion on this project? The uh, Oak Trail Reserve, PUD. Uh, Chairman, I'll make a motion that okay. the um, Planning and Zoning Committee um, Commission recommends approval for the preliminary and final subdivision plan for Oak Trail Reserve PUD um, project number LS2016-002 subject to the resolution of staff comments before the City Commission meeting. Second. Okay, I've got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Questions? 
Yeah, I'd just like to make a statement. I mean, um, okay. I've, I've said this before when these things have come up. You know, these shotgun houses bumped up next to each other with a 70% or 75% sometimes impervious area. It's just we're essentially making parking lots. It, it's, it's no different than, to me, a uh, uh, constructed version of a, of a trailer park. And I, I just don't think that, that, uh, that that's, that's the way we, and, and development after development is coming through here with these things like this, and, and, and it's just a tidal wave. And, and it seems futile to speak out against them, but I'll continue to do that. point is well taken. Um, I think we are in, in compliance with all the uh, land development codes as far as the uh, surface area covered and, and drainage and water, 100-year uh, retention, etc. Uh, is there anything in the, um, the, the conditions or the outstanding items with staff that you'd like to tell us at this time that, can, that would be of concern? There should be anything, there should be nothing. Uh, it was mostly more uh, technical um, comments that I remember from uh, uh, Public Works. It was mainly how he's handling the uh, stormwater issue mm -hmm. and the wetland issues. Those are the ones that I remember off the cuff. So we're pretty much in compliance design-wise of all the, yes. the land stormwater. development code and the uh, yeah. elements of the comprehensive code. Yeah, that's what we're reviewing, okay. that's the ones that we're wrapping up now that they are in compliance with all the stormwater management criteria. I personally am concerned about, since this has opened up, uh, the concern about the, the fire. Um, in case there's a fire situation, it seems like the buildings are really kind of close together. Uh, is, is there any additional threshold that kicks in as far as construction of the buildings that you, is that something our building department would be involved in or? Well, um, this a building, Florida yeah. building code issue. Uh, um, yeah. And they, they are wrapping this up now on different techniques. Um, the, there's a cost associated with when you have this separation yeah. requirements and it's, some, it's dealing with a one hour wall rating and that break, brings up the value of the houses and that's why um, they wanted to um, separate them a little bit, but they came up with some other solutions mm -hmm. and still interpreting the code. Um, and the building officials is the ultimate person that's in charge of those things. Um, so, uh, and the applicant, all he can do is uh, uh, request. I know they've been working it out. Both of them have been working this out. And now they feel pretty confident they have a product that'll meet the Florida building code. Uh, with this five foot setback, it'll be 10 feet total between the houses. Mm -hmm. Okay. I do have a question on the table, but can I ask the applicant a question about the construction? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we've already had a motion, a second, I and a question. Now you're going back to discussion. Where you, that's out of All right. Robert All Rule's right. order. Don't okay. count that. Just a personal question about the construction. Sorry, curiosity. All right, uh, I call the question, and all those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. <laughs> well, I'm going to now. Thank you. <laughs> Before you walk away, yes. and, and this is this is a you know I think it's pertinent now because we are putting these buildings so close together. Fire considerations are one. The second thing is sound. Uh, are we making any difference? Uh, any construction techniques that are going to help sound travel from one to avoid traveling well, one well, just, unit just, to the other? Yeah, well, just for the record, so. Uh, the, the five foot or 10 foot building separation has been the building code for as long as I've been doing this, I'm fairly old. Well, in PUDs, uh, but I think other places it's seven still? It's seven, you can go down as low as seven feet. Uh, but under, that, under the new standard building code, it, that what they, all they changed was the eaves, which stick oh. in, into it. The eaves now have to be the same fire rate. So um, in talking with the building official the other day, there's, there's three or four options, up to, I mean, up to and including simply just painting it with a special, a special paint. Hmm. And so uh, that, that will then meet the standard building code requirements. And there's multiple ways of doing it. Uh, as far as soundproofing, you know, all these houses that are being built today 
be it either CBS or stick belt or whatever, have insulation and have soundproofing much better than we did we did even 10 years ago. And the windows so too. The I windows, uh, I, I do not, I can't tell you that these are soundproof windows, but they're, they're again, I think the quality of the products that we now have uh, are, have really gotten much much better. Uh, so uh, and and again with a 10 foot gap between buildings, uh, you know, I, I don't think you'll have any sound issues whatsoever. Okay. I just want to assure our residents that we are doing what we can do to um, provide them a good product from this side of it. So. Well, you know, and I would invite anyone, um, I think the 12th, which is next Saturday or uh, coming up, uh, we have our opening out of McCormick. Uh, Ryan Holmes is the builder there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you come out and look at the product that is being built or the product is being built at Spring Lake, uh, but the, the model that we've just finished, uh, you know, I, I, I do believe it's a little bit better than a trailer. Uh, in fact, I think it's much nicer, and it's it's a it's a very good looking house. Uh, and uh, you know, if you'd like, I'd love to have the opportunity to show it to you. Uh, and we think that the neighborhood will be a very special neighborhood. It, it, it undulates; it has a little shape to it. It's it's not just a, a straight flat board, as will the Oak Trail. Oak Trail, as you, if you drive by the property, has a lot of roll to it, and we're trying to take that keep that roll in it. We think that's mm -hmm. a nice addition, and that plus a nice quality product. Uh, it's a very nice product for the residents. Right. I'll take you up on that and I'll come by and take a look. Please, uh, Antonio knows how to get a hold of me. I'll, I'll be very happy to meet you out there. All right, thank That'd you for the information, good. sir. Again, With that, oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Tony, were you going to give us the 429 update on that? Um, actually, the 429, part of the, uh, uh, the study update, next week, the March 14th, Monday, they're going to be talking about the 429. Um, Monitorium and the 429, what they're uh, envisioning for the 429. Uh, unfortunately, um, Mike Rumor wasn't able to come tonight. He, he, oh, okay. He got some time that, that he could spend with his family and uh, over spring break, and, and it was one of the last minute items that that they decided, well, um, okay. to give me this. <laughs> so I guess we'll, we'll table that to the next time we see Mike then. Uh, any, other questions of the staff? Of well, I noticed on the calendar that the commission meeting next week is canceled yes. on election day. Yes. Is that true? No, there's actually a special it's session. Not, it's a uh, special meeting. There will be a special meeting at 715 to address the um, charter school, but okay. the regular city commission meeting is oh, okay. canceled for next week. Okay, so there's a special meeting that night. Yes, All sir, right. 715. All right. So who's going to be the mayor? Oh, um, you you will um, swear in new officers after the election results are certified. Ah, okay. So the polls close at seven, and then the, the results are certified by the supervisor. Okay. All right. With that, I think a motion to adjourn. So move. move. A second. Beach it. We're out of here. <laughs> All those in favor, leave. Aye. <laughs> There's something going to change. It seems like it's well. Possible. There's a all right, Antonio. There's a conjunctive study between the land and all that. So we can see kind of a good and the various things that are kind of various. I can, I can get with you later. I don't know if there's actually a, a whole organization that...